Hello, Guardians. It is Ebontis, and the dawning has returned for um, basically this season, for season 19 and the end of 2022. And we've got some pretty nice weapons, like a machine gun with incandescent, for example, that you can go after. But what I want to do in this video is basically explain how it all works. And if you are new, some of this will be brand new. If you are old, some of this will be a kind of a quick refresher course. Basically, how it works. You're going to have ingredients that you can earn by defeating enemies of a certain type, like Vex, drop a Vex ingredient, and then also defeating enemies with a certain type of weapon, ability, damage, function, like a finisher or an arc weapon or a super, that kind of thing. You're going to combine the ingredients into baking cookies, and you're going to give those cookies to different NPCs around the system, and those are going to give you Dawning Spirit. Sometimes they'll give you a gift in return, and then you can also use your Dawning Spirit to upgrade kind of the basically weapon focusing and weapon drops that you're gonna get. So when you talk to Eva the first time, she is going to give you your oven. Make sure you have space for it because I think it was full on bounties or something, but if you don't, just go back to her, you'll pick it up. And she's gonna give you, say, these three things. She's gonna give you an ether cane, delicious explosion, and she's gonna give you 15 essence of dawning. So you'll basically bake one cookie, you'll walk over, give it to Zavala, and then she's gonna tell you to look through the dawning event challenges. The dawning event challenges, we've seen event cards now. Basically, you're going to want to bake one of every cookie. Um, there's a reason you want to bake actually one of every cookie, even though there's 22. This is only 20. One of every one will be important. Um, buy all the upgrades from Eva Levante. There are certain ones I'll tell you to focus on first and later ones that you can get to if you want to. And then it's like defeat combatants with snowballs. Snowballs are back. Snowballs are sitting on the ground. You'll see them kind of floating. You basically pick up a snowball, chunk it at enemies. It's got a nice stasis splash damage. It also does a good chunk of damage. So if you're in Vanguard Ops, like basically every strike is going to have it in there. Dares of Eternity is going to have it. You'll find snowballs quite a few places. So if you see them, pick them up, throw them at enemies, enemies especially in Vanguard Ops or Dares of Eternity. Knock these two out. And again, each one of these, a lot of these are going to be giving you Dawning Spirit, which is beneficial because the Dawning Spirit is going to be used for those upgrades. Then it's going to be like, you know, Defeat Combatants or Guardians with Arc, then Stasis, and Solar, and Void. So, I mean, if you really want to be crazy about it, you could come in here and go Void Weapon, Stasis in this slot, then you can go Solar up here, and then you can switch it over to Arc here. And that way, pretty much everything you're doing is making progress to those event challenge cards all across the board. So, I mean, if you just vary your loadout up and you're like, oh, I finished solar first, well, then I can take the solar thing off and add an additional thing. Uh, stasis weapon, I definitely is one I would put on your kinetic slot, though, until this is done, because unless you are running a stasis class, which not much else calls for that, the stasis weapon will be a nice way to knock it out and just let that kinetic slot work. Vanguard Ops and Dares of Eternity, I've done a couple of strikes, I've done some dares. This is actually not going to be that difficult. It's nothing like before. It's like five strikes or a couple dares, you know, or a few dares, something like that. I did one Crucible match and I'm at 20%. I did, I think, one Wellspring and I'm at 20%. I did one Heist Battlegrounds and I'm at 17%. Like, you're only going to have to run, like, five Crucible matches, like, you know, a few activities in the Throne World. You know, it's not going to be nearly as bad. So... Make sure you're mixing up the different activities that you do. Again, you'll want to check all these boxes if you're trying to get Dawning Spirit, because they're just a nice way to actually get Dawning Spirit. And if you do everything, you actually can get an Ascendant Shard and Ascendant Alloy. So if you're looking for upgrade materials, those are actually pretty nice. But that's pretty much the card. Just read what is there, and it will usually tell you what you need to do. Just make sure you read all the text. Sometimes it's not that clear. So once you do, you know, look at the event card, you'll go back to Eva Levante, and she's going to give you... The big quest, and it's basically bake a cookie for everybody. So you're hopefully going to be cooking one cookie for every single NPC anyway. By the time we get to page seven, I assume most of them are going to be done. Now, it's pretty straightforward. If you need to go, Ada One is found in the Tower Annex. She prefers hot cross buns, hot cross fire buns, which use ether cane and balance flavors. And you're like, what on earth are those if you're a new player? Well, you're going to say, okay, so Ada One, she likes hot cross fire buns. Ether cane and balanced flavors. What are those? The ingredients, as I said, come from whatever you kill. So if you need ether cane and balanced flavors, then ether cane is going to be gained by defeating fallen opponents. Whether you're on a patrol zone in the EDZ, running a strike, doing a gambit, 
you know, match, whatever it may be. If there are fallen opponents in your path and you kill them, then you have a chance to get some Aether Cane. Sometimes it feels like it doesn't drop that often. Other times it's, you know, it's Feast or Famine. It feels like it doesn't happen that often. I'll see like two or three pop on my screen. It's weird, but sometimes it, you're like, I just need one of these and they just won't drop it. And then finally you'll get a couple right before you're ready to give up. So normally it's not too bad if you're just going through and doing all of the different stuff that you'll be doing like strikes and gambit matches and dares of eternity. You're going to get a good mix of enemies anyway. So you should start getting a good variety. Now some of these are going to be specific on the rare ingredients. Some are very straightforward. Rocket launchers, grenade launchers, grenade abilities. Just chunk your grenade all the time. Um, defeat enemies with swords. You are going to need to probably go find a sword, equip it, and gather up at least a little bit of this until you're done with those. I don't usually see the sharp flavor as one of the common ones that people farm for the weapons later on. But early on, yeah, I would probably get some sharp flavor working. You know, solar damage, arc damage, void damage, making orbs of power. If you're trying to struggle with making orbs of power... One of the best things I can tell you, depending on what your subclass is, and you, if you have a weapon that matches it, Harmonic Siphon. Get a couple, you know, get some rapid kills, make orbs that way. Also, Kinetic Siphon. Kinetic, you know, Kinetic Rapid Final Blows, especially if you have a decent weapon up there. You know, you can make that work too. But yeah, set yourself up to be able to make orbs of light. You'll get some from your super, but if you get them from the weapons, that one's going to come quite a bit quicker. Uh, a couple of the other ingredients that you're going to have. Personal Touch is melee abilities. Dark Frosting is stasis damage. Uh, superb Texture is super abilities. So instead of like a bubble, try and use throwing hammers for titans, that kind of thing. Don't do something that buffs you specifically. Try and do something that actually causes damage with the super. Multifaceted flavors, just rapid multi-kills. You're going to get a plenty of those. Balance flavors, this is more accurate weapons like bows, snipers, scouts, pulses. Finishers. Finish what enemies you can. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Just don't forget the finisher buttons there. So you at least stock up a few of these. Again, finishing touch, sharp flavors, flash of inspiration. These are ones that you'll probably use just a couple of times to make sure you bake each one one time. And then when you're done, you probably won't worry about them. Bullet spray, you know, auto rifles, SMGs, heavy machine guns. Perfect taste. That's precision damage. You get the precision crit, you know, and you get the kill. You're good. Now, the thing to note about the recipes, they take one of each ingredient. They always do. They all just have a different mix of ingredients. Your goal is to eventually find something that you can farm. Now, this is an easy one. Now, I'll cover Essence of Dawning here in a second. But Chitin Powder, that one comes from Hive Enemies. Electric Flavor, that's from Arc Damage. So, if you can sit there and do the math of where I'm going, some of you guys know what I'm going to say. If you do something like Grasp of Avarice in the opening section that spawns an infinite number of Hive Enemies from that cave, and then a few Wizards... And if you have an arc weapon that you can use just to melt some things down, you're going to be just farming that until you're blue in the face. Now, that one's one you can just load into if you want Hive. If you want Taken, then you're going to be farming some Shiro Chi. If you go input the checkpoint on the with wish wall, with wall, <laughs> wish wall, then you can go farm Taken, and that would be another alternative depending on what you're farming. Now, if you're going for Taken for a recipe, again, you're just looking for something that actually says it requires Taken, which... Again, Taken Butter and Electric Flavor. Similar idea. If you're farming Taken and you're using an arc weapon, anything like a Volt Shot Sidearm, to, for an example, same idea. You're just going to be, you're going to get to a point after you check all the boxes of the event and everything else, and if you're farming for weapons, you're going to want to find one cookie that you can cook as many as possible of, and then at some point, you're going to have so many ingredients, your Essence of Dawning is going to be what's holding you back. Essence of Dawning is kind of the slow point of this whole thing. Basically, it comes from engaging activities and completing challenges all over the system. Now, the activities that they talk about are going to be things like Strikes and Crucible and all that stuff. The challenges are going to be these guys. Your weekly challenges, whether it be bounties, whether it be, you know, usually bounties. You've got clan XP. Maybe it's run a nightfall multiple times. Get your 100k on a nightfall. If you're farming for pinnacles, you're going to be wanting to do a lot of this stuff anyway. So those are going to be giving you some essence of dawning. But again, your basics, like your vanguard ops, crucible matches, gambit matches, which you need to run some of these things anyway. Also probably could run some dares if you want to. Those are going to be ones that you need to run for the event card as it is. So you may as well run those to make sure you check off the event card. But again, each one of those activities, they're about 15 to 20, somewhere in that ballpark. 15, 16, 18, 16, 17, 15, 16, 18, 20 every so often. That usually seems to be my drop from Crucible, Gambit, Vanguard, 
dares of eternity stuff of that nature now if you go do a public event or heroic public event it's going to give you like five if you go do a patrol it's like one or two but you know if you're going down here to devrim k you're picking up some bounties and the public event starts yeah knock it out for five see if you can pick up a bounty while you're doing it you know farming lost sector not going to be that beneficial now if you're farming a legend lost sector like sepulcher and you've got a group and you can farm it really fast that's going to be one of the ways if you have the checkpoint for investigation basically you get to the end of the mission on one of your characters you leave and join your friends with another character so that other character that you logged out of has the end of the mission saved then the three of you go complete the mission you load in that other character and you just rinse and repeat that's what the investigation one is but if you do this solo it's about six or seven minutes so while that might be slightly faster i can probably run a lost sector that i farm just about as fast and you're going to be getting the same thing so if you're a solo player which i know many of you are or you're not trying to you know do the efficiency of checkpoint farming which is really boring but it is technically one of the fastest ways to do it then yeah that's how you're going to be getting your essence of dawning and that's what you're going to use now i will tell you if you are a new player you are going to want to make sure you masterwork your oven but to masterwork your oven you have to cook one of each of these and there are 22. so three times seven 21 belt plus the new one for finch so it's 22. it's 330 essence of dawning to masterwork your oven now if you're a new player like me and the only one that i had not made this year was the finch one i cooked this cookie and i masterworked my oven now why is masterworking so important it takes your essence of dawning from 15 down to 10. so when you cut a third of the essence of dawning required off of each cookie when you go to farm that's kind of important it's going to add up and basically what this means is you're going to be able to once you masterwork your oven and it's going to take you like go through this whole quest there's probably not going to be many left that you need to do but how this generally is going to end up when you get done you're going to have one cookie that you want to farm and you're going to go hang out with that npc now again do the bounty pick up the bounties those are going to give you dawning spirit the weeklies are like 10 the dailies are like two the repeatables are like one but every cookie you bake Greetings. is going to give you three dawning essence every time and that dawning essence is going to add up a lot of the event card things that you're going to do have da Shells dawning spirit sorry not dawning essence uh, when you bake a cooking exchange it you get dawning spirit so once you bake the cookie and you start gathering up the spirit you're like okay what's this other currency for this currency is going to be for upgrades at Ava the bottom row is about upgrading the snowballs the snowballs while fun and powerful in strikes they're actually kind of cool I would leave those for much later until you're trying to actually check off the event card box and you know get the seal as kind of the last thing the main ones are up here I think she makes you get this one the boon of friendship but then you come over here and you've got dawning bounties get an additional random ingredient it's like sure but not a priority for me dawning bounties reward a small amount of dawning essence now that one's not so bad especially if you're repeating bounties getting some essence of dawning that could be worth actually the farm if you get it early uh the important ones if you're farming for specific weapons unlocks the unity and edgy gift exchange and then this one unlocks the limited gift exchange and then before you exchange any of these gifts because basically anytime you give an NPC a cookie, you have a chance to get a gift in return. Now you can open this thing, get upgrade modules, legendary shards, cores, prisms, glimmer, I feel like. Or you can take that thing and actually focus it into specific weapons or kind of in a half a hodgepodge box. But I would not focus anything. Like I could focus this right now for 22 Dawning Spirit, but I'm not going to do that yet. The main reason is you want these last two before you start focusing anything gain an additional having a ch have a chance not a guarantee but have a chance at additional perk in the left column and the right column so basically it gives you a much higher percentage chance once you get both of these you know to get your god roll that you're looking for now it's up to you if you want to spend 10 dawning spirit here for a gift in return or if you want to spend 25 dawning spirit depends on how hard it is for your dawning spirit to come to you and if you just want a very specific role, you do have to earn the weapon one time from random boxes. So you're going to start with these for a little while, or maybe you'll get one of these random ones from a gift that you give to an NPC. But this is why. I mean, you've got an avalanche that can get incandescent. You've got, you know, a new stasis pulse rifle, and you've got a really cool sword. So there's some good weapons. I'll probably do those in a separate video. So stay tuned for kind of the weapon roles I'm looking for. But that's the general idea of, of the dawning. You kill a bunch of enemies whether it be with arc damage in your killing hive or finishers 
and you're killing scorn, you want to go through and cook all the different ones that you need to. So you cook one of each cookie. Make sure you're doing some strikes, do some crucible, do some gambit, do some dares, mix it up. And then make sure you're picking up your bounties. And as you go through, don't forget about the repeatable bounties. And then focus on your upgrades first. And remember, don't focus any of these things until you have the upgrades over here you want. Because these cost Dawning Spirit per upgrade. And then every cookie you bake is going to be a focused, you know, basically a chance for three spirit, chance for a little bit more. But the other piece is, every time you bake a cookie, you're going to want to eventually find the one that you're efficient at. But the essence of Dawning is, good, is going to be what slows you down. Because each activity is going to give you that, like, 15 to 20 range. So you do two activities, you can bake about three cookies once you masterwork. You do two activities, you bake two cookies before the masterwork. That's why the masterwork is so important, it adds up. And again, depending on what you're going for, if it's taken butter and null taste, that's void. Taken butter and... So yeah, go use like funnel web with subsistence while you're farming Shirochi. You might get bored, but you could do it. Then come over here if you want shit and powder and electric flavor, if you want to farm Grasp of Avarice. Those are the main ones that I would recommend for just kind of an infinite farm. But typically after you play for a while, you're going to have more ingredients usually than you have Essence of Dawning. If you run out of the ingredients outside of Essence, yeah, then go farm after you've baked everything and just find the one thing that you can just dump every cookie into. So that's the main gist with Dawning. Hopefully I covered about everything. If there's anything I missed... Uh, let me know, but there are some weapon rolls like the Stay Frosty Pulse. I got um, not a bad actual roll. Nice to have adaptive munitions in the top slot. The Dawning Surprise, this little tiny box that drops, it basically gives you a hint of glimmer. It's not a big deal. I wouldn't worry about that. Origin trait's kind of a kind of not really worth it. But other than that, the Dawning actually does have some very good weapons. And if you're going for the seal, hopefully this guide helps you. If this guide helped you, please drop a like below. Leave a comment if there's any drastic thing that I missed. You guys can find me over on Twitch and Twitter. I am going to be streaming my Game to Give stream tomorrow, so please come check me out over there on Twitch. I will be there for the better part of the day. And if you guys are new to YouTube, hit that subscribe button and hit the alert bell. I've got plenty more guides for Season 19 coming to you. And of course, Lightfall is not too far around the corner, so I will be doing a bunch of crazy stuff then. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one, and good luck.